Priez pour elle pour sa délivrance. There's a chronic headache. Yes. And it has given you some depression. Yes. Because you don't know you have applied the tablet. There's nothing you have not applied. Yes. There is a growth. Yes. Did you go to doctor. Yes, I went already, and uh, they couldn't detect what kind, what type of growth it, it is. I've had MRI of the brain already, and they're not sure what it was. I had it done in New York about uh, two months ago, and I also have um, history of cancer, but breast did, cancer. Did they see growth? Right, they saw the growth, but they said it was. They couldn't define what it was. Okay. Yes. This growth has spread all over your body, and it has coming out your blood and everything. I keep asking them, but they just keep giving me medication, and they keep using the word. We're trying to give you something to make you comfortable. So I told them, don't talk to me like that, because I'm in the medical field also. But they have told you that it has reached the highest level. Stage four. That is the highest level. Yes. Are you a doctor? MRI specialist and a radiologic technologist in New York. Mm. And this is what you treat, and this is what is tormenting you now? Yes. Okay. Who will not treat him? You practice where? In New York. I say what? Radiologic technologist and MRI specialist. I have my ID over here if you want to see it. And you are facing these challenges? Yes, since uh, 2012, and uh, I went on remission for one year, and then we started uh, seeing traces in my blood, but the scans were all negative. And 2015, New Year's Day, I had a sharp pain on my back, and we did a scan again, and uh, within two months, it felt like somebody just threw the cancer cells inside my body, and but they have no answer to it. Is that true? The cancer also appear in different body, your, like breast and other? Yes. It's in your breast? The right side. Of your breast? And it was removed, but it came back again. de lui il y a 7 ans, il a un cancer, un cancer qui a affecté aussi son sein. Là, on a confirmé que cela est vrai. Il a fait un scanner au niveau de son cerveau. Cela a commencé par son cerveau qui s'est répandu dans tout son corps. Il a dit qu'il était un spécialiste justement dans la médecine, et aussi euh, des scanners. Et ce qu'il a l'habitude de traiter pour ses patients, c'est ce qui lui arrive aujourd'hui. Il n'y a pas de solution. Il est au stage, euh, l'étape 4, qui est le stage final du cancer. Uh, prophétique et confirmation, c'est euh, docteur en radiologie. Él mismo padece de esta enfermedad, es una enfermedad de cáncer, el tumor se percibe en todas partes del cuerpo, principalmente en el pecho, lado izquierdo, observe su liberación. That's where I have the most pain. Here. Yes. Here, the yeah. place I touch. Yes. de Dieu maintenant prier pour lui et il vient de dire à l'homme de Dieu qui est en train de toucher exactement l'endroit où se trouve le cancer au niveau de son sein c'est une libération le prophète est toquant à ce homme exactement où il a dit c'est le dolor plus grand c'est la station de ce cancer il s'en a reçu sa liberté Emmanuel Let's do better than this because you saw the, you know, uh, the video and it's real. So, Emmanuel, yes, this is a good place. And uh, my name is Jeffrey Osai. I was born in Ghana, but I live in New York for the past 
30 years. My profession is radiologic technologies specialized in MRI. Now, I have a son named Joshua, and we happened to be playing one day, and he said to me, Daddy, I'm going to show you how to play with children, because, and mind you, this is my only child, and what happened was I, you know, he wanted to box, so I hit him on his shoulder, and he said I hit him too hard, and he touched me on my right side. And he said, Daddy, touch it. Sorry. He said, touch it and pretend it hurts. So I touch it. But he said, harder. So I touch it hard and I felt a lump. I never felt that lump before. So I went to work the following day and I called some nurses to come and fill it. And they said there was a lump. So I went to see my doctor and uh, we took some images and uh, did biopsy and it happened to be stage two The two breast cancer. And that was uh, 2012. And, you know, imagine you've been told that you have cancer. Um, cancer is a dreadful disease. You know, um, you can get away and get out easily with cancer. I work with cancer patients, so I know how it is. So I had a bilateral mastectomy, meaning they took all my breast, and then you follow up with um, chemotherapy, which by itself is dreadful. I, I'm not sure who invented that, but that kills the cancer cells and also attacks the good cells too. So by the time that you were healed from your previous ailment, you have another ailment coming to attack you. They say when you're old, you know, it's kind of easy on you because the cancer cells kind of, um, I mean, the, when you are old, the manufacturing of the cells are slower than when you're young. When you're young, you create more cells. So when you're young, you end up, you know, having a disease again, you know, by the time you're old. So are you getting cured? No. So anyway, I had a chemotherapy and uh, I had a radiation where, you know, they burned that area where, you know, where the cancer was. So thinking that, that's it. And uh, you can go home and be happy. And they give you some medication to take for five years. So I thought I was free of cancer. You know, I was home with my wife and my son. And uh, 2015, New Year's Eve, I felt a pain on my back again. And uh, I went to work, had them scan me on my back, and uh, looking at the spine, because that's where the, the pain was. And there we saw that the cancer had come back on my thoracic spine, which is your mid-back. Now, we were following this, you know, we were taking images called PET scan. PET scan is when they scan you from your head to your feet. But from 2013, we kept checking it, and there was nothing until November of 2014, when
when my doctor, um, you know, decided to do another scan. And uh, when you look inside me, it looks as if within two months, somebody just threw the cancer cell inside me, all over. You know, I, in my bones, my liver actually is about 90% gone. You know, I'm still alive because the liver, um, the liver um, enzymes, you know, is still working good so I can break down food. Um, so again, all over. So what they do, uh, what they do is to just try medicine on you. There's no clear-cut medicine which they can use. So they start with a series of chemotherapy and blood tests. And whichever works for you, then they, you know, they stick you on that. So meaning, if I give you a chemotherapy A, and your tumor markers, which is how to determine your um, cancer, is going down, then that means that you know chemo is good for you. If that chemo is not working for you, then they have to keep on changing the you know chemo. So they jump from one chemo to that another chemo. So meanwhile, your cells are also no one being, you know, dying and being affected also. So, you, you know, there's no win situation for you. So two years ago, my brother who lives in Japan called me and he said, have you heard about TB Joshua? And I said, no. He said, make sure you watch his service every Sunday, because I know you home Sundays. And I said, okay. So I started watching it. But I, there was a difficulty in watching the service. Every time I touch, because he told me to touch the monitor, you know, doing prayer service. When I touch the monitor, I start to shiver and my body gets hot, and I wanted to get out you know, of the house. So I started watching it on a laptop where I can hug it. And, uh, you know, it was a mess, you know. And I told my wife, I said, I'm trying to watch this thing here that my brother told me in this service, and I can't watch it. When I try to watch it, I'm getting more sick. You know, I'm shaking, I'm shivering, you know, and my brother keep calling me, did you watch it? And at one point I have to lie to him that, oh yeah, I'm watching it. But he found out I was lying to him because he asked me, what was that service? Did you saw that woman that was possessed? You know, and I said, you know what, let me try something else. So one day I just sat down and I said, it's just a laptop so I can, you know, wrestle with it. And I watched the whole program, and it was great. And I felt good, and I kept watching it all the time. So my brother called me, and he felt good. And he said, how do you feel? I said, I'm feeling good. He said, okay, we're going to go there. I said, okay. I bought tickets, and every time I buy the ticket, all I'm thinking about is I'm going to die because he said to me, if I want to fly from New York to um, here, it's going to be difficult because a lot of times it people try for several years before they get that you know, chance. So we should f fly to Ghana, meeting, you know, meet at Ghana and then come here. And that's why I'm here. So now, 
Sunday came, and uh, it was funny because uh, we were rushing to come here from Ghana, so I left my shirt and my tie. So he gave me a shirt, and then uh, he said, I don't know what to do with this tie, because we may have to share it, because there's a significance about this tie. If you put a tie on, I think you'll be closer to the man of God, because you look good. But he said, you know what? Your problem is bigger than mine, so I'll give you the tie. So he gave me the tie, and I thank him. Now, this is a guy with big faith. I mean, um, his faith is maybe beyond sky, you know. So we came, and uh, man of God came, and it was so funny because uh, he walked to my brother and touched him and gave him his deliverance. And I said to myself, the guy was not wearing any tie. So why did he get his before me? And I was amazed. My brother lived in Japan. Every dime, every time he gets a lot of money, you know, the Japan yen, he flies to Ghana, buy a land. He has so many land. And the man of God said to him, you have a lot of properties, you have a lot of lands, but it's one of them that you can part with it. You could be as broke as anything. You're going to have to save that land. And I said, my God, as we say in New York, this is a, a home run. This is exactly what this guy have. And I prayed and said, can he just touch me? And before I finished, he just was passing by and hit me. And I couldn't believe it, you know, because my faith is that big. And uh, I turned around and he looked at me. He actually smiled and he said, come up. And I came up and he said, you have something in your brain. And I said, yes. And we did MRIs, but they're not conclusive. Um, they look they just like plaques. We're not too sure if it's cancerous. He said, well, whatever it is, it has spread all over your body, all over your body. And I said, okay, um, he knows. So I said, I couldn't hold back anymore. I said, I have stage four breast cancer, which has spread all over my body. And uh, he turned to the, the congregation and he said, actually he said, and you're a doctor, you work in a hospital and everything. And I said, boy, I used to watch this on TV and uh, the man of God is real. So, we talk about the way it spread and everything. But then he walked to me and uh, he started rubbing his hand at the area where I have more pain. Now, remember I said to you that I have about 95% of my liver that is gone. Now, that gives you pain. All I live for is pain. He hit a home run. He touched where the pain is most. And, uh, you know, that's the lower quadrant, and that's where my liver is. And I have to take narcotics, you know, to be able to, you know, uh, sustain the pain. Now, as I mentioned also, you know, the cancer has spread everywhere. So in my bones, so my bones are all, uh, my bones are brittle, so I can't fall. When I fall, I can break something. So when he was touching me, because I, again, I watched this on TV, and I thought, you know, uh, he push you and you fall. So I was trying to take stand. But every time he touched me, I fall. Every time he touched me, I fall, which amazed me. So the man of God is very powerful. What it is, is 
I was asking about it. I said, why do I keep falling? And I was told that, you know, you fall and then, you know, you, you kind of defeat the demons that have plagued my body. So, if somebody tells you that you have cancer, psychologically, that's the end of it for you in reference to sleeping. So, every time I sleep, you know, I feel like, okay, this is going to be the last day, you know, I might not wake up. So, every time I go to the master bedroom, my wife comes in, and I wait till my wife is sleeping, then I leave the room to my son's room, because he's only 12 years old now. I've been with my wife for about 30 years, and I, you know, she complains that, how come that every time I wake up, you're gone? I said, we've been together for about 30 years. Joshua, only 12 years. So I think I want to spend some more time with him. You know, and when, so I'm always depleted of sleep. When the good prophet touched me and I fell, the following day I couldn't wake up. I slept like, uh, I don't know, to say a newborn baby or a baby. For the first time, I slept like a baby. And it's not a joke. I think in my room, if anybody is here that stayed in the room with me, I think I, I missed the breakfast or I went to breakfast very late. My brother thought, you know, there was something happening to me or I was dead. So he woke me up and he said, what's going on? And I stood up and I had no strength in my legs. And I said, I just want to sleep. So he said, all right, just go back to sleep. So I went back to sleep. I was enjoying sleep. So... Until one of the coordinators called, it woke me up somewhere, uh, I think around three or four o'clock, that uh, we're supposed to meet at the church for some fruits. And uh, that's how I woke up, and as I started walking towards the church, I just felt like, uh, you know, I felt so strong. And I remember my brother telling me that, bro, I was looking at you, and you felt like uh, a lion. You were just walking. And I said, I feel great. Do you believe that? I feel so great. And uh, I said, now, <laughs> I don't know. I feel so great, very great, inside and out. I just want to thank Jesus. And I want, you to, I want to encourage you all that Jesus is alive. Pain in my chest is gone. Normally, when I'm taking a deep breath, I have to stop halfway because then I feel the pain and it's all gone. I just want you to have faith. Fortify your faith and you get everything that you came here for. He is real. My advice to you all is this. You have to clear your heart before you go to Jesus. That's how I did. I prayed to God. I cleaned my heart, cleaned my heart. So I felt refreshed when I came here. And I'm holding this because the man of God said something and it's something that I always look now. And he said, I'm trying to memorize it, but I can't. 
and it's very short too. He said, when you pray with a clean heart, you scored 50% already. So, seriously, when you pray with a clean heart, your troubles are done. I thank you all, the man of God. I don't know how to thank you, but I'll be back to testify again. Well, people that know me always see me with a bag. And uh, it's always, you know, it's filled with my medication. Because somebody asked me, are you afraid to leave your bag behind because you think somebody's going to steal your money? And I said to him, no, it's just my medication that uh, I have to keep taking. Because I was instructed that even though I'm all healed now, I still have to take the medication that I brought over here. So we have been listening to the inspiring testimony of our brother here, who is an MRI specialist who traveled all the way from New York and USA to come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations with a case of stage four cancer, which has spread to the entirety of his body. And what he is showing us right now is the different types of medication he had been taking on a daily basis as a result of the severity of his condition. He said anywhere he traveled, he would have to carry uh, this medication in a bag. Uh, and each time he slept at night, he would have the fear that he would not wake up the following morning because of the severity of the condition he was in. So uh, we thank God Almighty, sir, for this wonderful prophecy you received and the healing that instantaneously followed it uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you just quickly show for us again, sir, the uh, medication that we're seeing here? Well, most of the medications are just uh, painkillers because uh, what is cancer? Cancer basically is pain. That's what you get. Pain, pain, pain until you die. You know? And uh, I mean, I, you can't compare this with spiritual healing because I think uh, Jesus is the answer because I take this and how long does it last normally four hours I have to keep popping these painkillers and remember these painkillers also have their side effect so it's a no-win situation for me, you know, and uh, they don't tell, even tell you how long that, you know, you have, but at least I work in the medical field and I know that when you reach stage four, that's it for you. So again, I just want to thank God for making this possible for me. I have no pain, no pain whatsoever, no pain whatsoever after my deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. Querido televidente, como escuchamos el testimonio de este hombre después de la palabra profética por parte del profeta T.B. Joshua, él estaba en la congregación el fin pasado, en donde el profeta le dijo, usted tiene un crecimiento, es un tumor, que primeramente eso fue el diagnóstico, pero ahora se ha esparcido en todo su cuerpo. Hoy vemos la confirmación de esa profecía con esta gran liberación. De hecho, él es un doctor eh, especialista en radiología en los Estados Unidos, especialmente en el estado de Nueva York. Es un especialista en cáncer de MRI, resonancias magnéticas. Él es especialista, de hecho, de este tipo de tratamiento de enfermedades. Sabiendo que tras el año 2015, descubrió un agudo dolor en la espalda, un análisis de sangre que finalmente detectó que el señor tenía cáncer, cáncer de seno especialmente y fue exactamente cuando el profeta TV Joshua, como vimos en pantalla, tocó exactamente esa zona en donde él dijo que tenía este problema de cáncer de seno, especialmente este agudo dolor. Él comenta que eh, es doctor, especialista exactamente en estas resonancias magnéticas en radiología, en cáncer, 
y que tomó diferentes tratamientos sin ninguna solución o cura, inclusive sus colegas, tra diferentes tratamientos, medicinas, hasta el grado de llegar a quimioterapias que no solamente no ayudaban, sino estaban complicando su dolor, su problema. Hoy está aquí, de hecho, in, eh, explicando en pantalla todos los medicamentos y de hecho el nivel 4 de quimioterapia que estaba ya en esta, este nivel de cáncer esparcido en todo su cuerpo con dolores extremos al grado de él pensar que al dormir ya no iba a despertar. De hecho, pensaba pasar más tiempo con su familia, puesto que ya esta situación lo tenía completamente deprimido al saber que ya va a tener cáncer, es mentalmente agotador y pues pesimista en pensar que ya no tiene otra solución. Tuvo la oportunidad de conocer a Emmanuel TV y asistir a la Sinagoga Iglesia de todas las naciones y hoy el día comparte este gran testimonio de estar completamente libre de dolor, dormir como un niño y estar sano de este problema de cáncer. Vous avez vu cet homme, donc Dieu l'a délivré de ce cancer qui était généralisé, son foie était touché, sa vie était l'article de la mort, le cancer était à l'étape 4, qui était la message générale. Donc lorsqu'il est venu, il avait peur, lorsque l'homme de Dieu l'a touché, le cancer est parti instantanément, il a été guéri, absolument guéri. Et il nous montre les médicaments qu'il avait pour soulager la douleur qu'il avait. Tous les jours, il devait prendre ses médicaments. Les médecins lui avaient dit qu'il n'y avait aucune chance, le cancer avait atteint l'étape finale. Donc quand il est venu ici, Dans désespérance de cause, le prophète Yeshua lui a parlé prophétiquement qu'il y a une tumeur dans votre corps. Il a dit oui. Et l'homme de Dieu a dit que cette tumeur, cette maladie s'est répandue dans tout votre corps et il a confessé. Lorsque l'homme de Dieu l'a touché, c'était la fin. Maintenant, il est guéri. Il a dit que depuis une semaine, il dort comme un enfant, il n'a plus de douleur. Hallelujah. One more time, we give glory to God for this wonderful healing. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And finally, sir, we'd like to ask you, as someone who is experienced in the medical fields, uh, a professional, even specifically in this area, an MRI specialist who has a lot of experience dealing with people who have conditions such as cancer, which we know medically has no known cure, uh, what is your advice to the people in such field after your own personal experience encountering, encountering spiritual healing and the power of God here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations What is your advice to the people who are in that field and also to the people who are experiencing such a problem as you once had? Well, I had my deliverance here. So, as far as I'm concerned, I know that Jesus is the way. So, if they've tried with medication and it's not working for them, they should seek a good church and go for prayers. Jesus is the answer. Le conseil qu'il donne à tous les hommes et les femmes qui sont dans la situation similaire, lorsque votre maladie semble incurable et que les médicaments ne fonctionnent pas, allez chercher une église vivante, cherchez Jésus. Jésus-Christ est la seule réponse. Lui seul peut faire un, mettre un terme à tous ces problèmes. El doctor, este doctor de radiología, de resonancias magnéticas, especialista en los Estados Unidos, en el país de Nueva York, da el consejo a todos los televidentes y a tanto a sus colegas que estudian o que padecen este mismo problema de cáncer sin ninguna solución, sabiendo que es una eh, enfermedad terminal, aconseja que Jesucristo es el camino, Jesucristo es el Salvador y que vayan a, a cualquier iglesia creyente y que en verdad pongan toda su fe en nuestro Señor Jesucristo porque Él es la salida, Él es el sanador. Well, one more time, we give glory to God Almighty for our brother's testimony right now. And we know that what he is saying is that doctors can treat, but it is Jesus Christ that can bring a permanent cure and solution. And we have nothing against medical doctors or hospitals. We know they're doing a wonderful job in treating and assisting people. But there are many situations that have gone beyond the power of nature. And that is why there is a need for divine intervention, as is the case of our brother's situation. So one more time, we thank God. We pray that God will give you the grace to maintain this wonderful healing by making the Word of God the standard for your life. And we know the best is yet to come as you do so in Jesus' name. One more time, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Nous vous encourageons toujours à chercher Jésus. Rappelez-vous que c'est lui qui est le premier, l'alpha et l'oméga. Et lorsqu'il dit oui, personne ne dira non. Quelle que soit votre situation, cherchez le Seigneur car il est vivant. Lorsque Jésus dit oui, personne ne dira non. 
Gloria a Dios, damos gracias a nuestro Señor Jesucristo por esta sanidad, esta redención en la vida de este doctor que padecía de cáncer de seno, pero hoy en día estar declarando su testimonio y su libertad para la gloria de Dios, estar completamente libre de este problema. So this uh, the healing that took place last Sunday. So this gentleman was in the service last Sunday and it's just a touch. That is God for you. Can we call the gentleman out? My brother, come. Let me ask you one or two questions. Just come on. What happened when the, the right hand of God was laid at a position you have the pain? Well, like I said, um, the cancer is in my bone. So actually, I cannot fall. I normally get an injection where the, that ke the chemical or the, the medicine takes calcium from my blood and deposits it back into my bone. So we, as you were coming to touch me, I kind of stay still and strong, but I felt like a paper. And, and you know, like you're dropping a paper and I fell down. And then I felt like something had lifted off, off um, out of me. You, you, and, listen, you listen to what he's saying now. The, as a, a cancer patient, being a medical doctor that know what it means, their bone is very, very fragile. That falling down is a risk. That if they fall, it could damage their bone. He know this. And when he was looking at people falling, he said, oh no, this is abomination for me today to fall. <laughs> to, him, <laughs> to him, he said to himself, no, 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 it should be abomination. I will not fall. And, uh, and I know he might have uh, done some exercise. And OK, I never knew this anyway. My concentration is to get that cancer out of his body. I was not interested in whatever and whatever. But this cancer, where is it? When I was looking at him that Sunday, I look at his appearance, I saw a lump. I said, no, 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 this lump is long. If lumps is stay long in your body, it become cancer. It's, it's a stage of cancer, like a primary school in uh, Kigagati. A, a nursery school for the primary school, nursery school. And the nursery school will surely go to primary school. And primary school, if you trusted to go forward, you will go to secondary school. Secondary school, go to university. This is Joseph. So I, I look at it, this is slum. But by the time I look down, not just the eyes of, uh, I'm talking of the eyes of it, because uh, many of you, you may, when you live here, you start looking at the cancer, you want to see cancer. You cannot see cancer with this eye, <laughs> because I need you to know that. So, and uh, I saw the hurt in the body. This is why I was asking those questions. So, and I was just looking at the point. The point means where he will likely come out. Cancer may not come out of the body, but in, destroy the body, and it lead to death. But some come out half mouth, it will just come out and start to bring pause. And before you know it bleeding and you see hole. But some can stay in without coming out. But destroying inside. But why some will, will want to come out? So I was just looking, but before I knew it, I saw the point. I saw the point. It's like a, one has a cat inside you. A living cat. It may likely stay there forever till the body will die. And why you will want to come out? The same thing in our room. If rat enter your room, if we have, you know, it may choose not to come out, and it may choose to come out. Some rat will stay there. It can be staying there unless you have some chemical that is very dangerous for him. 
If not, he may stay there and be quiet and stay with you for many years and he will be eating whatever around. So in the same day, so I was looking and I saw where the cancer is trying to, trying to. And I, this is where I stretched my hand. And he said to me, ah, that is the point I'm feeling it. I said, oh, that is the point you are feeling it, but I'm looking for a point to enter that cancer. Because that is the mouth where he wanted to come out. So what I was saying today, just short title, take it. I was telling you that when you confess what is in your heart. So this man, well, I saw him confessing what is in his heart. And he was blood, blood. And we need to see you. You need to write a book about yourself, OK? Because you that have been helping people, treating people, now the same sickness is now attacking you. And uh, you said you spent how many years now in New York as a this, uh, specialist? Oh, uh, I live in New York for 30 years, and I've been a specialist for 15 years. 15 years. Specialist on this cancer? Yes. For 15 years. It's a strange thing to you. And I, how will you convince your people that the name Jesus is real? Well, um, already they've seen it because uh, they've watched the YouTube and they know who I am and I don't tell lies and uh, they saw that I was not anywhere than uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua's church. So they can't wait for me to come back and see how I look. Somebody, t somebody told me that you look young already. And I said, wait till you see me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You listen to that. You have God you can run to when you are sick. When you are facing challenge, you can run to and he will rescue you. What else again? Like it's here now, it's from, come, let the viewers see us together. I'm only meeting him here in the church, but he says from United States, which I know, he must have prepared himself because he know nothing happened for nothing and nothing come by chance. He must have prepared himself because that is life all over the world. Even the air, you have to buy air your water, everything, because the world has turned to that. The world has turned to that, that people begin to buy air. This is air from God. But here is my brother. The world today, they don't understand what we call peace of heart. If anything has changed from him to me, in, in time of money, before he received this blessing and healing, one will be a partaker of that sickness. You listen to me? But people don't know that like someone who is in need of rescue, sickness, and we, you now use that opportunity to collect something. You know, at that time, you're ready to give you anything. It's ready to give you money. And you announce it until, before you do this, you need this. Before you do this, you need this. And you use whatever you collect there. It always go with the spirit of affliction he has. Because he's not going to give anything at that time with all his heart. He's given in because of the problem he has. And anything that does not come from one heart is a sin. Tell your neighbor, whatever that does not come from my heart is a sin. Can you see the life you are living? If you help me and that help is not from your heart, it's a sin. 
Me, you commit sin, and I that receive it too, I receive sin. If you now help me now, and that help is not from your heart, I that help you, I commit sin. You that receive that, you commit sin. If you now give me money, and it's not from your heart, you are giving me affliction. I that give you affliction, you that receive it affliction. Sit down. Go, go and have your seat. I'll see you. It's given me that part of affliction he has. Can you imagine the life we are living today? And most especially, we ministers of God. We ministers of God, can you see the challenges we are facing? It has been stated the manner we must receive and the manner we must give. There is no excuse that I must buy fuel, I must pay electricity, I must take care of the ministry, I need money to do that. But so with this, if you now look at this procedure, you can separate the wheat from the chaps, the real from fake. It's easy to separate in the house of God. Are you with me? Fake and real is, is easy to separate in the church of God. By this statement God has given, freely I give and freely you should give. You can separate the faith from the real. Say to your neighbor. Freely I give you and freely you should give. That statement separate fake from free. This statement is a simple statement. Bible have stated it clearly. Freely I give you, and freely you should give. Simple. The law is our strength. And money comes from our strength. Fame comes from our strength. Whatever you need come from our strength. And the law is our strength. For one to say in the name of Jesus, and for Jesus to come to the scene, that in the name of Jesus must come from your wall. How many of you speak from your heart? That is it. And when you say in the name of Jesus, and it's from your heart, the job is half done. Here Jesus come in to bring balance. And the balance is for him to come to the scene and say, I'm here. What do you want me to do? Healing. And How do we speak this in the name of Jesus that come from our heart? When you say in the name of Jesus, you mean you total support, total rely, total believe. Today, yesterday, and forever. That is it. Jesus is not just now. When you stand before him, he demands for now and demands for your future. When you are now telling him, Jesus, help me. Okay. He will say, if I help you, you will follow me. To follow him is for your future. He's interesting in your future. Tomorrow. Say, Jesus, heal me. And he will say, okay, I will heal you. You will follow me. This is what he say. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow 
me. This is that is. That is, if you speak your heart, I will make you a fisher of men. Help me. Help me. It must come from your heart. Mean, help me. When you say help me, mean, help me the rest of my life. Me, I will follow you. So, speaking what is in our heart, the job is half done. Here, Jesus comes in to bring the war, the balance. So just look at him. Look at our brother here. Speaking what is in your heart can also help you to maintain your healing. For him to maintain this healing, what he said to Jesus must come from his heart. So you need maintainer, and the one that gives you must maintain it for you. It's not possible for me to give you this. If I give you this, and someone else will come and help you how to, how to treat it. It's not making sense. I that give you must also tell you how to use it. That is maintenance. That is maintenance. Hallelujah. What are you doing? What are you saying? Jesus loves you. You may be seated. We believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations and changing the world.